Hello everyone um, and welcome again to my to my YouTube channel uh, for these days of quarantine hope uh, you're all safe at home and 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 I'm trying to to make a uh, brief topics in musculoskeletal pathology just to just to speak a little bit about about some some issues and today um, I'm going to I'm going to speak about a little bit uh, about pubic related groin pain uh, as you know there are a lot of publications on pubic related groin pain and on groin pain in athletes so very good publications um, but uh, I will try to make a, a, a brief summary or or, or sp speaking how I how I work or how I deal with with pubic related groin pain first of all what we need to know exactly is the exact anatomy of the region as you can see here there is the adductor longus you can see the adductor brevis here the pubic symphysis but we have to know that there is a sheath from the rectus abdominis that is crossing uh, until the adductor muscle group and it's a direct connection between the abdominal wall and the adductor muscle group so what we really need to know as you can see is that the adductor longus has a very uh, hard and a very uh, strong tendon that is attached in the pubic symphysis but also with muscle fibers attaching in the in the pubic symphysis here you can see the distal rectus sheath that is connecting and crossing from the adductor uh, longus to the uh, rectus abdominis but this is not all about a uh, fight against the abdominal group against the uh, adductor group uh, it's much more complex as we will see than that but we have to know that there is a disbalance between a lot of muscle groups that are attached in the in the pubic region and in the pelvic region we all know that it's a, uh, the, the injury mechanism is a repetitive and cumulative uh, overload especially in soccer when uh, you are kicking sprinting changing directions of, uh, all the time so so it's an overuse pathology and the incidence more or less is from 0.7 to 7 percent in sports population depending on the sports and depending on the player and the characteristics the individual characteristics of, of everyone the problem that we have is that this is not an acute sharp pain as a muscle uh, injury this is a progressive pain during the sports practice and normally quite diffuse sometimes in the lower part of the abdominal wall sometimes in the middle part of the thigh sometimes directly on the on the pubic symphysis but so it's, it's very inespecific especially in the first stages and the diagnosis is mainly clinical we will see some mm, some maneuvers very 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 easy to understand but but the diagnosis is mainly clinical and the uh, imaging tests such as uh, x-ray ultrasound mri and uh, gammagraphy uh, scintigraphy um, it's only to uh, make a complementation of this diagnosis i personally only use the ultrasound and the clinical diagnosis and we have to know that depending on the stage where we uh, the return to play could vary between one month and six months so it's a very wide period of time according to the symptoms and according to the to the patient uh, to the patient pathology so here we have uh, a lot of force vectors from every muscle that is going in that region this is an old schema but it's very very uh, illustrative of what we are trying to say um, you can see that there is this is not only about rectus abdominis and adductor muscles it's much more complex than that in 2015 uh, in this article it was described uh, the pubic clock uh, so we can find that there are a lot of uh, actors uh, against the pubic symphysis or the superficial inguinal ring rectus abdominis pubic symphysis itself adductor longus and inguinal ligament so we have to take uh, into account all of this and especially also the aponeurosis on this uh, that is crossing the rectus abdominis and the pubic symphysis to go from the from the rectus abdominis to the adductor longus this is a late article uh, from 2019 and it is described perfectly in cadaveric and in MRI 
this aponeurosis that is crossing from the rectus abdominis and the pyramidalis and it's crossing the pubic symphysis to reach the adductor longus and the adductor muscle group. So it's a very hard uh, shift, it's a very important shift to know and because this is probably one of the main problems in the pubic related groin pain. And as always, we need to know that there was a lot of terminology and different terminology when we spoke about this kind of pathology and in the Doha agreement meeting uh, they made it a common nomenclature which is very very important because everyone needs to speak the same language and they decide uh, to make what they call an adductor related groin pain here and iliopsoas related groin pain which in my opinion it has to be uh, more with hip pathology, the inguinal related groin pain that normally it's going with uh, inguinal hernias and the, finally the pubic related groin pain that is the one we're talking about in this small small speech. But we have to know that in the differential diagnosis we have to take into account also if there is a hip pathology as I said for example on a, an impingement a femoral acetabular impingement due to a cam uh, deformity or a pincer deformity, if there is a referred lumbar or sacro iliac pain, if there are any stress fractures on the pubic or, or pelvic bones, or if there are a hip joint pathologies such as osteoarthritis or synovitis, or there, if there is any gynecologic or uh, testicular tumor or low abdominal tumor. This is important to know as a differential diagnosis. This is another article from the late part of 2019 and it says an algorithm of how to treat and how to reach a correct, um, a correct diagnosis of this. Obviously for me the main part is the clinical diagnosis but we have to look at that the ultrasound is important in that kind of diagnosis as we will see. First of all we have to know that the pubic apophysis uh, starts the maturation quite late and it can last until 20 21 years old so if we see a very very young football player or athlete with uh, with uh, uh, this kind of osteophytes or irregularities in the pubic symphysis we need to uh, we need to know that this could be a pubic apophysitis not always uh, it's uh, it's um, a pubic related groin pain or uh, athletic pubalgia uh, as, you, as you as you can understand and this is how i how i reach the diagnosis of pubic related groin pain this is a squeeze test you you all know that kind of test so i perform the squeeze test in that three positions and then i perform an ultrasound uh, and uh, apart from that with the with with palpation it can be direct with with my hand or or, or even uh, with sonopalpation, with the proof of the ultrasound, if the squeeze test is, uh, is painful, the sonopalpation or the, palpation or the direct palpation is painful, and we see in the ultrasound uh, these irregularities in the morphology of the pubic symphysis, uh, for me, in my, in my opinion, I start uh, uh, treatment this as a as a pubic related growing pain and I start with a, a complex and individualized core stability program. Um, you can see in this video transversal of the pubic symphysis you can see these irregularities in both pubic branches. So you can see here now I'm moving to longitudinal you can see here the pyramidalis and rectus abdominis these aponeurosis crossing and marked irregularities in the pubic symphysis. Again, you can see here the irregularity, the adductor longus tendon, the adductor muscle here. Again, more irregularities in transversal plane. Obviously, this, uh, for me, this with a clinical exploration, a pathological clinical exploration or a painful clinical exploration, for me, it's a uh, enough for the diagnosis of pubic related groin pain uh, obviously if we have make a differential diagnosis of the other of the other uh, possible diagnosis that we have in this in this area again irregularities here and as you can see more irregularities here so 
We know that the treatment of this kind of pathology is a conservative treatment, it's physiotherapy treatment, we have to assess risk factors and we have to make a correct stabilization of the lumbopelvic complex, uh, very individualized according to every sportsman and according to the sports they practice. But when do we need to plan if uh, we need surgery for that kind of, of pathology? Um, this is also only my experience and uh, of, of, of looking to, to football players, to professional football players with that kind of pathology and I call it the, the, the quadrant theory. So I get a, a, an image or a schema of the, of the pelvis, of the pelvic region, the complete pelvic region, and I divide it in four quadrants. If we have more than three months evolution, if there is no response to conservative treatment, and if we have three or four quadrants affected, for me, we have to plan or have to start planning a surgical treatment. What I mean, an affected quadrant. For example, this. You can see here the irregularities in the pubic symphysis. Here is the ultrasound, um, the adductor longus tendon, the irregularities uh, in, that, in that part of the pubic symphysis. You can uh, also see this in that part. So that would be two affected quadrants. But here in the, in the upper part of the pubic region, what we can see is what we call the spores hernia. You can see here with the Valsalva maneuver, this uh, spores hernia with its protrusion with the Valsalva maneuver, and that means that there is a really weak abdominal wall. Uh, abdominal wall. So if we have a spores hernia here or a spores hernia here, an affection, uh, and and this quadrant is also affected, three or four affected quadrants, I plan normally. Uh, a surgical treatment but um, normally nowadays it's very very uh, difficult to, to reach the surgical treatment because we can we can afford and we can manage quite well the pubic related groin pain with the with all the treatments that have been described in the literature and and so we can plan it correctly and and surgery surgery is nowadays a very very uh, strange way of treatment of this condition and that's it uh, I know this is a very brief, this is a very uh, small talk about a, a very complex condition. You know, I can refer you to some literature that are speaking uh, very, very deep in that kind of conditions and there are very well articles published. So uh, if you want to deep inside, uh, you just have to, to go to PubMed and, and search for, for this kind of literature. Hope is this, uh, hope this is useful for you. And if you like it, just uh, subscribe and, and, and nothing else. See you, see you in the next video.